Hello, I'm Liam and welcome back to Austin 7 Adventures and in this episode we're here at the NEC in Birmingham for the Classic Motor Show. In this episode we're heading to the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham for the Lancaster Insurance Classic Motor Show held annually every November. We're thrilled to have been invited to display the lone car on the pre-war Austin 7 Club stand alongside some other gorgeous examples of members' cars. We'll also be catching up with some other participants in the Classic Car Loan Project and chatting to some of our friends who are lowering the average age in their own car clubs. The NEC Classic Motor Show is the jewel at the end of the season and we haven't been here for a couple of years because of the pandemic. I, for one, am delighted to be back. The show features a massive range of cars, from vintage and classic stuff through to modern examples and, well, pretty much everything in between. It's also a great place to catch up with old friends. <laughs> As we all know, car clubs have been working particularly hard in the last couple of years to improve the uh, standing, shall we say, for young members. And one of the ones that have been quite successful in doing that is the TR Register. Hello. So we are the TR Registered Youth Group. Uh, we are on the side of the main club that like to be youthful and young and, well, basically party a lot harder. So why is having a youth group really important to your club? Because it's the way of continuing the car club to go on for many more years. Without us, we, we're pulling in new members, we're trying to grow the club still, and we've got to, we've got to, we want to keep the club alive. And Grace, you've been involved with other car clubs as well. What is it about the TR youth that makes it different and that would make you want to join it? I think it's just like the casual element and the fact that everyone just makes you feel welcome and appreciated. Even like the older lot and the younger lot, they all work together and that type of cohesion I just haven't found in the other clubs that I've been a member of. Yeah, I think it's a lot of people ask people like Charlie and I, because we're involved with these things, what you can do to make a car club more accessible for young people. So I, I think the, the big future into it is a lot of, we need to collaborate a lot together. There's a lot of youth groups out there now that are starting to come up, which is great. More and more clubs are starting to develop their own youth groups and it's great to see. But the only way we're going to stay strong is stay together. There's no need for rivalries here. We've got to stay together, bigger and better together. Also at the show this year were the Jaguar Enthusiast Club's Young Members Group and possibly my favourite midget ever owned by Stan Carter from the Mask Young Members. So this is Liam and this is Liam's car, Mavis. So what could you tell us about Mavis? Well, so I've had Mavis now for oh, probably coming up on three, four years now. Um, she's my daily driver. I use her every day for work. Go on long trips as well on holidays. Um, does run about 10,000 miles a year. Um, very reliable. You can always count on her starting up first time. Had a couple of flat batteries, fair enough, but you know, still got the option to crank her. And what do you think about schemes like the Classic Car Loan Project, which take a slightly different view on a way of keeping that next generation involved? So, um, personally, I think it's absolutely incredible what, what the Austin 7 um, Loan Project has done. Because, you know, how many people, um, young and old, have driven a pre-war car? And you know, giving that, op that opportunity to younger members is just an opportunity that you know, people can't really... So I'm now joined by Tom, who is in the Classic Car Loan Project, and he's here. So would you like to tell us a little bit about the car? Uh, so this is the 1928 Model A Phaeton, uh, kindly lent by Peter Garrett. I haven't had any experience with classic cars before, uh, and you know, as, as the project is meant to do, encourage you in, bring you in to uh, experience it, um, and I've loved it. What are the big differences between this and maybe a modern car that you maybe weren't expecting? It's it's a much purer driving experience um, so there are differences three gears and double D clutching and no power steering uh, but you get used to all of that I really enjoy it's not a challenge to drive it's not difficult to drive but I like that you have to be kind of present you, you can't really shut off um, so you're always watching what's going on around you not you know in an enjoyable way you, you kind of have to be in that moment of driving and and knowing who's where and what's going on um, so it's a lot more of a involved kind of experience in, in a good way in a good way um, it just makes you actually kind of not take it for granted and enjoy 
that driving experience, as I said. So how have you shared the car with other people and encouraged, help you know, show off what the loan car scheme is all about? Yeah, my, um, my job is as a science communicator, so I basically go in schools and blow things up. When I became involved in the project and when I started speaking to Bob and Peter, um, I, I kind of thought that I'm very lucky that, that it's being shared with me and, uh, and all the cars are being shared with us, we get that opportunity. Um, so between that and my work, it seemed like a really good opportunity to, to get it out there and me kick it down to kind of five, ten year olds uh, who I see on a daily basis. Um, so the first time I went into a school, I wasn't sure if they were actually going to be that fussed by it. I thought, am I going in for me rather than for them? Um, but as soon as they start coming out and looking around it, and they love it, get such a good reaction, reaction just instinctively. Um, they're normally confused that there aren't seatbelts. That's the first thing. How come you're not wearing seatbelts? Um, but you know, it's a, it, you can open the bonnet and, and say, you know, this does this, because rather than plastic covers and things like that, it's all there to be seen. So you can, so I talked through, a, a, I've got a model of an engine and talked through how it all works. And uh, yeah, they love it. I get them to look down the horn at the front and say, if you look down that, you can see into the engine. And then I hit the horn and it scares them all and that kind of thing. But they really enjoy it. It's just something different, isn't it? Coming up later, we're invited to the Classic and Sports Car Club Awards, where we've been nominated for the Digital Media Award, which recognises clubs and individuals who have made a contribution via social media and YouTube. Now would be a good time to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all our future Austin 7 adventures. So we're now joined by Andrew and this beautiful Mark III Riley Elf. Well, it might be beautiful one day, and Andrew is going to tell us a little bit more about that. So um, first of all, can you just tell us how you came by the car? Right, uh, we heard about this car through another member of the club and so he was down in deepest Devon uh, we've got a member who like, went to have a look at it in Devon and uh, he said yeah the car's fine, he said the paintwork isn't very good and we're working uh, closely with the local college in Coventry and so the car at the middle of November will be going off to be repainted. So you could understand why some clubs and some pro some projects such as yours might be a little bit um, anxious about buying a car and investing all that money into the project. What advice would you give to any club committee that's considering becoming part of the Classic Car Loan project? Yes, uh, it, that's a very good point. We I had to sell the idea to our, um, our trust members and um, and our sort of the management team. One of the things I said to them, I said, "You're buying an asset. You still own the car." It's not depreciating, so if things went wrong and we ran out of money, we could always say, sorry, we've got to sell the car, but it's an asset. But it's an asset which is helping the cause of the club and the trust and so on, so you're in a win-win situation. There's not enough young blood coming through to encourage them to, um, to take on classic cars. You sit behind that and you, a big smile comes on your face. It's like driving a go-kart. It's so much fun and everyone goes, wow, look at that, it's, it's fun. And I think it's expressing or getting the interest in youngsters to have that experience. Classic cars are expensive now, um, um, but this is a fantastic way of introducing them to the classic car market. And then hopefully one day they will actually go and buy one of their own. Whilst at the NEC, we were invited to the Classic and Sports Car Club Awards, where we had been nominated in the category of digital media. We were joined for the evening by some of the older members of the pre Austin 7 Club and some young members of the Morris Club. Oh, it's on video as well. The awards celebrate the great and the good from across the car club world, celebrating this year's achievements for club events, publications and personalities. I think we were just in it for the free food. Everybody was quite pleased to receive a goodie bag, but one of our party was especially thrilled. I love top shots. <laughs> Do you think I should be nervous? I'm thrilled to be able to welcome you here to the NEC's Gallery Restaurant for the Classic and Sports Club Pub Awards 2021. Held once again with the, this year with the support of our fantastic sponsor, Lancaster Insurance. What is the Social media and the podcast. In the end, our judges narrowed it down to this shortlist. The pre-war Austin 7 Club video series, Austin 7 Adventures. Woo! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Pre-launched standard motor car website.
supported by the projects we that encourage a new generation into the classic community. And Liam Murphy's adventures with his classic car load project Austin are engaging and great fun. Our winner is the pre-war Austin 7 <laughs> We have had an awesome weekend here at the NEC. We've seen so many cars, I think I've forgotten them all just because there are so many. Um, and we have a little bonus. So this car, this Wolseley 1500 Mark 1, will be in the Classic Car Loan Project as of next April. And here to talk to us about it is Graham. So Graham, um, you've had this car for about three years now, is that yeah, correct? Three years. Um, can you just tell us what you've done with it? Well, it's been completely stripped down from when we picked it up. It has been not neglected, but off the road since 1992. Uh, and basically recommissioned it. I enjoy working on the cars, helping other people understand them, uh, and to pass that knowledge on to the next generation or even you know, people that um, have been with the cars for a long time that don't necessarily have an, uh, an in depth uh, knowledge of, uh, of the mechanical workings. It's, it's, it's just to help them to understand it. In, in, to get a better appreciation maybe. And so, a long weekend of car club fun comes to an end with the traditional blaring of horns. Thank you to everybody who came to see the Austin 7 over the weekend, and we'll see you next time on Austin 7 Adventures.